How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. Will 2019 NBA free agency almost complete? Some players haven't signed yet, while others will be unhappy with their new teams and will likely receive a buyout before the trade deadline. A year ago, I made a video on 5 of the weirdest free agent signings heading into the 2018-19 season, and that video blew up my YouTube channel, so I just want to say thank you so much for your amazing support, for continuing to support my videos and my content. I really appreciate it. But without further ado, here are the weirdest signings heading into the 2019-20 NBA season. Al Farouk Aminu to the Magic. Giving him a 3-year $29 million deal, who showed his weaknesses during the 2019 postseason. More evident to whether he was worth the pay increase, just shy of 29 years old, his 3-point shooting has regressed it. Throughout the last couple seasons, any team hoping to space the floor can't rely on the 6 8 4 to drain threes at a consistent rate, can't create his offense, very limited. The team still remains the same after the 4-year signings of Nikola Vucevic and Terrence Ross on four-year deals, they already have Aaron Gordon, Jonathan Isaac, and 16 overall pick Chuma Okiki. All much younger and way more athletic than Aminu, where it would be very difficult for all those guys to play solid minutes. Pretty much having the whole team back, Orlando will continue remaining average in the Eastern Conference, being very close to the luxury tax. They failed to address the point guard situation and rather pay a guy close to $10 million a year where they have three quality players in his position instead of looking for a real point guard doesn't make sense to me. The Dallas Mavericks resigning both big men Maxine Kleber and Dwight Powell to contract extensions. Kleber agreed to a four year worth $35 million deal while Powell will get three years $33 million. Both those players are solid off the bench but they aren't anything special, would have gotten a two year worth $10 million deal likely anywhere else. The fact that the Mavs will spend $20 million on those two role players combined each of the next three seasons might ruin their salary cap going forward. Neither one of them are solid enough to be starters. Powell's a decent backup who started 22 games, averaged 10.6 points to over 5 rebounds last season at 6'11". The Canadian native is very efficient shooting over 59% from the field each of his last two seasons. I don't mind Dallas resigning him. If they didn't offer Kleber a whopping 4 year $35 million deal where the 6'11 power forward averaged only 6.8 points less than 5 rebounds in 21 minutes of action last season, is already 27 years old heading into his third season, likely won't improve significantly. Kudos to him for getting that money. Most teams likely would have given him a one or two year deal. Will continue playing about 20 minutes a game for Dallas, knock down some threes, defend, and will need to provide much more for what his contract's worth. Kristaps Porzingis will play most of the minutes in the power forward position anyway. Wayne Ellington and Reggie Bullock to the New York Knicks. Starting with Ellington, with the Knicks giving him a two year worth $16 million contract, the soon to be 32 year old veteran should be on a contender. Comes off the bench to knock down some threes, bounced around the league, will be playing for his ninth different team. He's a solid asset for a playoff contender, but the Knicks will continue to be a bad team where they just throw away money signing multiple guys to two year deals before praying to get somebody good in 2021 free agency, where he will just be a very average player on the roster, likely won't get too much playing time, his best days are way behind him. RJ Barrett at the guard position will get most of the minutes anyway. Having a 2020 team option, I won't be surprised if Ellington will be playing elsewhere towards the end of next season. While Bullock was absolutely awful with the Lakers last season, only shot 41% from the field, signed for two years 21 million. With a 6'7", 28 year old shooting guard slash small forward, won't be improving. Getting way too much for another guy who's a below average NBA player. Some nights, I won't be surprised if he doesn't play. No way would any other team pay him more than 10 million a year, especially for a guy who's injury prone, never played more than 63 games in any of his six seasons in the NBA. The Pelicans resigning forward Darius Miller to a two year worth $14.3 million offer, who's not that great of an NBA player, where the 28 year old won't improve too much, average 8.2 points a season ago, but now with the team having many solid young guys, it was unnecessary for the Pelicans to pay him over $7 million a year. The roster was weak last season, that's why Miller played over 25 minutes a night, but barely provided much. While the 21 year old Brandon Ingram is bound to have a breakout season, Miller will be chilling on the bench a lot, whereas the 76ers signed James Ennis for only 2 years $4.1 million, who you can argue is just as good a player Miller is. Jimmy Butler to the Miami Heat, unless the team manages to land Russell Westbrook, which would make sense why Jimmy decided to go to South Beach. Butler, who will turn 30 years old before the start of next season, shocked everybody, taking his talents to Miami. Without any all-stars on the team, 
where they smartly got rid of Hassan Whiteside and some of the other bad contracts to make room to give Jimmy a four year worth $142 million max. The four time All Stars about to join his fourth different team over the last four seasons didn't get along with the young Timberwolves, forced his way out going to Philly, an excellent spot to contend for a title. The city of brotherly love could have offered him a whooping five year worth $190 million max, playing with two other All Stars, but took less money to go on a weaker team. Nobody in the world would have predicted Butler would sign with the Heat. Him being the only All-Star as the team currently stands, he'll help them make the postseason but won't carry them too far, likely a first round exit. The team's nowhere close to being a dread as real contenders in the Eastern Conference. Corey Joseph to the Sacramento Kings on a 3 year worth $37 million deal, way overpaid where the soon to be 28 year old hasn't gotten better since starting his career with San Antonio. Average only 6.5 points on 25 minutes of action last season, shooting just 41% from the field, struggled mightily the last two years, committing over $12 million to a guy per year who's fallen off makes absolutely no sense. Most teams would have signed him to a one or two year deal worth the minimum. The franchise decided to release the younger Frank Mason to give Joseph that type of money. I guess his defense and championship experience to the Spurs was most appealing. Honorable mentions includes Daddy is Young and Taj Gibson, where Young will be taking his talents to Chicago, who's a solid bench player, very efficient, but he'll be the backup to Larry Marketing, who'll get the heavy minutes. Three years worth 41 million seems a lot. Where he'll be 31 years old, he should have been going to a contender instead of a team looking to rebuild. And of course, giving Gibson a two year worth $20 million deal makes no sense for the Knicks, since he's way past his prime, won't provide much. But I don't mind the signings of Julius Randle and Bobby Portis, since they're both young and still have tons of potential. Thank you so much for watching this video. I talk NBA comparisons, amazing storylines, NBA history, and anything basketball that will interest you. If you love the NBA, subscribe for more content, more great stuff coming soon. See you next time.